Well, congratulations. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Thank you. So does this feel a little bit better because you had to kind of work for it a little bit more than if you had maybe come in and won your debut and... You know, um, yes, like uh, you can't be happy uh, when there's a setback, but life is full of setbacks and uh, at the end, you know, when you look at the whole picture, you know that those setbacks, uh, those down slopes just gave you momentum to go back up. What did you have to do to kind of uh, regroup between that first fight and now? Um, you know, it's really been a, a mental uh, struggle. For me, like, um, there were a lot of times, you know, like I think every fighter, you know, you doubt yourself sometimes. You don't know if you made the right uh, bad decision. Uh, even if you're undefeated, you know, as I was, there was still a lot of setbacks on the, on the road. Um, a lot of speed bumps, but uh, no roadblocks. And, um, you know, after losing it again, I, I did feel in that fight, in that last fight that I belong. I fought with a really high level fighter in Rafa uh, that was 12 and 0 before he got into the UFC, combated champion. And I think I gave him hell. Uh, but, on, so, but on the other hand, you know, I didn't get that first debut win. Um, and that's another another thing in your mind that, uh, that haunts you sometimes. What did you think of your performance tonight? I think it was a good performance as far as the two first round go. Uh, third round, you know, I had to really dig deep. Um, I got tired, um, maybe trying to finish him too much in the first and second round. I wasn't overzealous like I was in the Rafa fight. That's a lesson I learned, trying to throw bombs all the time and show how powerful I am. Uh, I don't need that to, to win a fight. Um, I'm very technical, I'm sharp, I'm fast. I think I can be, win a fight um, in any way, shape, or form. But um, just, you know, when you see somebody's hurt, even if the game plan is not to finish him, like he's hurting, you're close to finishing him. Um, even, for example, that first uh, head kick I landed, and then he took me down and I had the heel hook, you gotta go for that heel hook, like you gotta put some force into it and intensity if you're just going 50% to save energy might as well not do it. So I spent some uh, energy on uh, submissions and energy on uh, grappling and energy on striking. And at some point I was out of the energy. Uh, but I think again, I couldn't move as much anymore and, and faint and touch him, but I just had to bite down on my mouthpiece and throw heat back. And was there anything about him that surprised you? We knew it was gonna be tough. Uh, we knew it wasn't gonna go away easy. Uh, things that surprised me, not really, you know, um, my coaches told me how it's going to go down. That's how it went down. We knew third round is going to come at me, and he did. Um, and yeah, again, uh, it was about who wants it more. Um, I wanted it more. I work harder. Um, I had the first two rounds in the bag, and it was just about uh, doing enough and showing him he can't just walk me down, um, and get the W. And when do you want to get back in there? As soon as possible. Do you have an opponent in mind? No, not a, I don't have an opponent in mind, but uh, they can all get it. Hey. Thank you. Um, that, the, uh, oh, right over here. Uh, the left hook seemed to be finding its mark all night. Is that something that you trained for coming into this, or did it just present <coughs> itself tonight? Um, you know, I train, I think, every technique under the sun. Um, I thought the, the jab would land more. It happened to be the two, but it was the straight two. Like uh, me and, the, and my coaches, we worked on it a lot, of course. The body kick, the head kick. Uh, I was looking to implement more leg kicks, but, uh, you know, sometimes you see something happen and uh, it doesn't work out quite that, w that way, but that's why you got option B, C, D, E. You know, we had a bunch of weapons and uh, we used what we could when we could. Uh, and what did training in Japan do for your development as a martial artist? Uh, training in Japan, for me, it's, uh, it's like uh, who I am, you know. I bring it, uh, I bring the dojo in Japan to everywhere I go. 
in America, in Israel. Um, it's like discipline, it's, um, it's something else, you know, maybe I don't use the moves anymore as much, but the mindset is always there, it's uh, who I am. It's the hardest time I ever had in my life, was living in Japan. Um, you know, I, was, I trained there when I was 16, when I was 18, um, just a kid. I didn't even have like uh, money to eat, training there for months, so that's something that made me, me who I am. And finally, for me, uh, you mentioned that you're going to be auctioning off your fight kit for a uh, Holocaust survivor uh, fund. I uh, just wanted to you, wonder if you could expand on that and speak to the, that a bit more and what it means to you. Um, you know, this week was uh, Yom HaShoah, Holocaust uh, Remembrance Day. So, like I said, um, if we would take six million Jews were murdered uh, and a lot, uh, a lot more people. Um, if you would take one minute of silence for every Jew that was more murdered, we would have to be silent for 11 and a half years. Um, you know, what they went through was horrible. Some of them have survived it and are still here today. And whatever we can do to support it um, and bring attention to it. There are many causes, you know, that are worthwhile. For me, this is the, the cause that uh, I see right now. They're not going to be here forever, you know. Uh, there's a lot of other causes that, uh, that are important, but the Holocaust survivors, they're all very old, and they're not going to be here forever to tell their story and uh, to remember those who are not here. Thank you. Thank you. Natan, congrats on the win. You look phenomenal tonight. Pretty exciting fight thus far. Thank you. The commentators were a little critical of, they, they thought you had Mike Hurd, could have finished him, but obviously we can't, we don't know what you're thinking. So when it seemed like you had your guy hurt and you could have finished, you thought, let me be smart about this and fish for that takedown instead of spending too much energy? Yeah, you know, and um, what you see from here, you don't see from there. And what you see from there, you don't see from here. Uh, sometimes, you know, I thought he was hurt. Maybe you guys didn't think he was hurt. Maybe sometimes the crowd thought he was hurt and I didn't. That's why you got a corner, right? That's why they tell you things you can't see. Uh, and sometimes you make a call, listen to them, not listen to them, because you can see some things. So for me, it was uh, listen to the corner, but also have my, uh, my interpretation on it. And, and my coaches, you know, Coach John always says, for example, what we say is like a recommendation. You know, it's not a, an order. And uh, I, sometimes, you know, I thought he was hurt. I did go for it. I did throw a harder shot. But also, I didn't want to just blow my load and, uh, and then have nothing left for third round. Excellent. And just for fun, in a week's time, your division is going to see the title on the line. A prediction, please, with Oliveira and Gagey. Um, I think if Charles is as focused and hungry as he was uh, in the last uh, in the title fight and the title defense, I think he's gonna keep the title. But also, I know the crown is heavy, and uh, he's probably got a lot of businesses right now and a lot of new things going for him. So uh, can't lose that hunger if you want to stay champ. All right. Thank you, sir. Congrats on the win. Thank you. All set, thank you guys.